12th of September. The next day I got onto my bike early in the morning and set off towards the forest. I drove through puddles and wet earth. The previous day's rain had left its mark, but I didn't mind. I was curious about what I had seen in that photo. At some point, after many twists and turns and dead ends, I was able to make it out again. The path opened and became a small clearing, and this pattern continued until the path became curved and twisted. I got off my bike and followed it on foot, and there I made a strange discovery. There was a stone about a hundred yards down the path, the rock I accidentally photographed the day before. The stone was full of strange engravings, none deeper than a centimeter. I couldn't see anything for sure. Most of the symbols were just lines and circles, but it seemed old, very old, older than all the trees that stood around me. I had never heard of anything like this in the forest, nor was I familiar with the history of the place. But there was something familiar about the stone. The signs didn't seem strange to me. The weather had worsened again by then, and after looking at the stone from every angle, I made my way to my bike and back home. Meanwhile, I recorded a video for the others to give them a better picture of the forest. But as I retraced the path, something happened that I only associated with these events in retrospect. I thought it was a wild animal back then, since I was quite deep in the forest. But now that I think about it, I can't remember seeing any living thing in the forest that day. I returned home without incident and shared my findings with the others. They agreed with me that I had to continue down this path. 17th of September The days that followed the discovery of the rock were quieter. The others were as amazed as I was by the stone and we did everything in our power to associate any meaning with the symbols, but we couldn't find anything specific. The dreams remained, and I would always be more aware of what was happening in my vivid dream world. One night, I could swear to see a slight red glow from behind the dream hut, and in another, I even heard hints of movement in the thicket around me. The days were just as subtle. I kept coming back to the path. Every day I looked at the rock and felt an acquaintance with the mysterious signs. I also repeatedly followed the path beyond, which still never came to an end, but the search remained fruitless. One day, when I was leaning over the engraved rock once again, it seemed different than usual to me, as if it had changed color. I quickly noticed that it was darker. In fact, almost no light seemed to fall on my surroundings, even though it was a bright morning only darkened by the thick rain clouds. I didn't pay any attention to it at first, as the dense treetops were probably blocking out the sun, but then I remembered that the stone was in the middle of one of the clearings. My breath froze when I wondered, whose shadow am I standing in right now? I looked up slowly, I heard a sound like rushing wind above me and, as expected, only saw the cloudy sky. I thought it was all my imagination, mainly because the colors were normal when I looked down again, but I noticed at that moment there was no wind at all. The real breakthrough came two days later, on September 17th. It was a rainy day again. The puddles had been deeper than ever since the previous night, and only on the streets was the ground really solid. My bike moved reluctantly through the mud, but I forced my way past the trees with their dripping branches, still looking for an end to the path. I overtook the section that marked my turning point on the last evening and drove down the treacherous path. As usual, I drove as fast as possible through the mud, looking for anything that couldn't naturally belong in the forest. What I discovered after a mile or so was as natural as it gets, but it meant so much more than that. When I had made another bend, the forest on my left seemed to open up. A large area of little to no trees stretched along the way and soon I could hear and see it. 
A large pond broke through the forest floor and grew wider and wider along the way. I immediately took some pictures to share with the other dreamers, because it was exactly this pool that I had seen before. In the last few nights, along the path in my dreams, I returned to show it to the others as soon as possible. To my horror, they all agreed that this body of water appeared in their dreams. It was getting too real for all of us. 24th of September After I found the pond in the forest, it became uncomfortable. For the time being, I stopped any attempt to penetrate deeper into the woods. The others were as curious as I was, but they understood my fear, so I heard next to nothing from them. I still took my walks through the forest, but never nearly as far as the rock. I often heard movement in the thicket, distant screams that I explained as animals, or unusually loud wind currents over the treetops. But I didn't hear most of it at all over the noise of the rain, which had only increased over the course of the week. The dreams didn't let up, but they quickly became a chaotic, confusing mess since the severity of the weather apparently increased there too. The trees themselves were blowing in the wind, and the rain came down hard enough to completely break through the canopy. During the day, my tiredness slowly drove me crazy. I could ignore it beforehand and distract myself looking for answers, but now I was alone again. From day to day, and from sleepless night to sleepless night, the thought only spread more and more that I could only return to normal when I finally find what the dreams want to show me. I didn't want it to be true, but something seemed to be calling out to me from the forest. It was on September 24th, a week after the investigation had stalled, when I finally decided to re-explore, hopefully towards a destination. I decided not to tell the others. I would only let them know if I discovered anything relevant. So on the afternoon of the 24th, I got back on my bike and headed for the forest. The rain was back before I reached the engraved rock. I drove on anyway, but noticed something unusual, or rather, didn't notice it. Nothing unusual was noticed. No inexplicable screams, no movements between the trees, no wind that sounds like the beat of mighty wings. Nothing. The forest had lost its unease. When I got back to the pond, I was convinced that the events of the last few weeks might have just been imagination and exaggeration. I stopped to look around the water. I parked my bike and walked along the edge of the pond. The rain had subsided, and I decided to film the forest and pond again in order to hopefully convince the others that we have nothing to fear. What I then recorded, however, only proved everything else, and made me flee the forest in a hurry. I don't know what I heard there, but now I think whatever it was just kept quiet because it knew that I was answering its call. <laughs> 